Hello, welcome to another edition of the Pace Report. I'm Brian Pace reporting live here at BB Kings here in New York City. In 1992, a hip hop group out of Atlanta, Georgia gave us the world hits such as Tennessee, Mr. Wendell, People Every Day, Revolution. Arrested Development brought a whole social conscious tip to hip hop along with their contemporaries like Tribe Called Quest, The Native Tongue, Queen Latifah at the time. But in 1996 they, they broke up and Speech picked up the group again back in 2000 and their latest album, Strong, is on the Vagabond label and it's doing quite well here in the United States as well as overseas. This is this is your first album you recorded in about four years. Has it been four years? Yeah. You know, I don't even be knowing, bro. Let me tell you, the years to me pass by like days. <laughs> days like seconds. Seconds like millers. You know what I'm saying? It's it's crazy. Why did you decide to, to, to put the unit back together again? Because, you know, this is a large group. An ensemble group is very, very, very hard, especially in 2010. Yeah. Well, you know, honestly, we've been back together since 2000. So that's what a lot of people in America don't know it because, you know, since 2000, we've been doing a lot of our releases overseas in Japan, started off there. And people ask, well, why? Why Japan? And it's because, you know, when we stopped doing music in 1995, um, in 1996, I released a solo joint. And that joint didn't do well anywhere but Japan. And so I was like, okay, Japan. So I started releasing solo albums over there, and I released five solo albums there. Every single one of them, all five, had top ten hits. So, of course, I was like, get in where you fit in. Let me just keep doing music in Japan. So then when AD, Ishii, one of the dancers in the group, asked Speech, why don't we get together and do more group stuff? I was like, cool. So we put the group back together. The first place we released music was Japan because it just made sense. And then we kept doing that. We kept doing music, Japan, Japan, Japan. And finally, here we are with Strong back in the States. And it was like, okay, we need to really focus on the United States as well. And in fact, Strong album just came out. And in Japan, which, like I said, is our big market, it went to top 10. Um, our, one of our songs we're going to do tonight called The World Is Changing went to top 10. In Japan, just December, this last December, so about six months ago, seven months ago. You know, we were talking just a little few minutes ago. When you guys came out, rap had an identity all over the United States and all over the world. I mean, you knew where hip hop came from by the artists and the groups that represented their regions. And one of the things that you guys did was you brought consciousness and you also kind of went against the grain as far as the images that were out there. Mm -hmm. How hard was that in developing? Because you were kind of a radical rapper when you came out from the gate. Right. Without a doubt, I mean, my thing, though, was, bro, I, I, had, I had been studying our history as people. And my thing is, I was raised, my mom started a newspaper called the Community Journal, all about black issues because of racism. That's what she started it, because back where I was from, which is Milwaukee, 
the white newspapers or the mainstream newspaper wouldn't cover any black issues. So my mom started one. Well, I was raised around that atmosphere. So, of course, as I got older and started, you know how you get young and you rebel against your parents. But then you get a little older and you say, you know what, I was 18, 19, I was going to college. My mom makes a little sense. And so I started to, you know, get into bands like Public Enemy and so on and so forth, reading books, Malcolm X, blah, blah, blah. That sort of helped shape a different revolutionary perspective for me about where we've been as a people, where we are, where we need to go. And that's what my lyrics was sort of shaped around. So basically, you, you really kind of came out of an evolution of a voice needed to be heard because rap still is the CNN of, of the black community. I think it needs to be the CNN of the black community. I think we've lost some of that perspective. Chuck D kicked that, and I, everybody uses that. I agree with it as far as what the purpose of rap is. You know, And it's not even saying everybody got to talk about an issue. I'm just saying we got to talk about everything. Whatever it is, you talk about one thing, I talk about the next. Just like you said, you had different regions. They was representing whatever was their thing. I learned about gangbanging from NWA. I never went to L.A. at the time. I'm not from L.A. I didn't know nothing about the Crips, Bloods, gangbang. I, that was new to me. NWA introduced me to that. My thing is, nowadays, hip-hop has got to bring that balance back because Back in the day, you all had your own thing to say. Now it's more uniformed, and it reminds me of a corporation where, or a franchise. You know, you do McDonald's here, and it's McDonald's, and Philly is the exact same McDonald's as the McDonald's in, you know, Idaho. And it's two totally different places. They franchised it to where everything is perfectly macked out. The fish sandwich is perfectly square, and the buns are perfectly the same, and everything is the same. It's like, no. Everybody's supposed to be expressing their own reality from where they're from. And it doesn't have to be conscious. It just has to be what you're doing. Mine was conscious. I'm proud of that. I'm all right with that. <laughs> Tell me how being a devout Christian has kind of enhanced what you write, what you talk about, and how has it helped you in the home as a family man? Well, first of all, I, uh, I've been a Christian for 15, uh, 14 years. And I'll just be honest. I mean, for me, Jesus Christ, because, you know, the whole term Christian, it, it can throw you off. You hear the term Christian and everybody, especially in America, thinks they know what that means. But what it really means is reading and understanding what Jesus actually said. Because there's a huge difference between what Jesus said and what people who claim to be Christians are living. So a lot of people will say, well, Christianity killed this people and did this and did that. And it's like, ah, erase all of that and just let's look at what Jesus is actually saying. And then that's what a Christian should be. Do people live up to that all the time? No. But let's talk about Christianity. That saved my life. Not only spiritually, but my marriage. You saw my family, man. My marriage would have been a mess just like most celebrities' marriages are. Because, to be honest, I don't think most of us learn how to build a great marriage. To those that have done it, God bless you. But for me, I would have messed it up. Because my father messed it up. I love my father. He's awesome. My grandfather messed it up. I love him too. I would have done the same thing. Jesus taught me how to have a relationship with a woman and how to think of her as a godly creature and how to love her and then how to respect and love two children who are just as confused as all of us were when they were young and that need guidance. We all needed guidance. And that's what Jesus taught me how to do. And then on a, on a bigger level, he's taught me all types of things, what wisdom is, what godliness is, what the whole plan of salvation, meaning what, what is there after we die? Because all of us go through this thing called death. So then what happens next? That's what Christianity is really about. A lot of people get lost in the sauce about what they've heard, what they think. And I wasn't lost in that. That's why 
I was able to convert to it because I saw just what Jesus was really saying and it convicted the snot out of me and it still does to this day. That'll do it again for another edition of the Pace Report. I'm Brian Pace Reporter live here at BB Kings here in New York City. I'd like to personally thank Speech and the band members of Arrest Development for their time and their hospitality as well as the wonderful staff here at BB Kings. As always, please visit my website, www.thepacereport.com, for my weekly column and my past television segments. Until next time, remember, if it's in the groove, it'll make you move. Until next time, peace.